don't buy a Bitcoin until you do this very one thing that we are going to share with you in this amazing podcast with Louis Sniper Pinto. If that's something that we want to find out, right? Stay tuned and continue watching this episode. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of the Modern Wealth Podcast where we aim to empower, enrich and evolve your mindset and today's episode is something that you guys have been requesting a lot because sitting right next to me is this amazing gentleman currently known as Louis Sniper Pinto, right? Hey. He's really has been uh, doing a lot of amazing stuff for our CRP and NWA community and many of you actually been requesting him to be on the show so that you can actually hear more about his life story, how this man here touches everything and turn them into literal gold, right? And how he's actually have this amazing mindset that mm-hmm. he's been uh, spreading across the whole community as well. So Louis, first of all, welcome to the show, man. Thank Happy you. Thank here. you, Gavin. Thank right. you. So I'm going to cut the change because mm-hmm. everybody has been wondering, right, mm-hmm. how are you so successful today like what is your backstory right how did it all come to be oh it's great so uh again i am my family is originally from india but i was born to immigrant parents in the u.s and i was unplanned my mom had me when she was 19. and one thing i realized growing up and again a lot of you guys might relate very humble beginnings is that my mom was always happy right we're always happy right we talked about mindset and so I remember back when I was in my 20s, I was, a, I was in the U.S. Navy, aircraft carrier, and I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Have you read that before? Yes, of course. Yes. I think many of us actually read yes. that book. Yeah. And, and then he asked him a question. He's like, you can either live an ordinary life or an extraordinary life. You have to decide. So I decided to live an extraordinary life. Now, when I picked, I said I want to live, live, uh, live an extraordinary life, it didn't happen overnight. Yeah. It took me years, but again, I started looking for choices. I started looking, let me take the road less travel. And so that's how I kind of, long story short, that's how I ended up here, right? And, and I'll tell you, it's not easy, but when you make that decision that I didn't want to be like my parents, my parents are all in the medical field and they're great. And 80%, 90% of the people out there, they have the 40, 40, 40 plan, which they work 40 hours a week for 40 years and retire on 40%. And I realized that's not me. Mm-hmm. And for many years, I thought I was the black sheep. But then I realized the community, when the personal development through Tony Robbins, through uh, Robert Kiyosaki, to a lot of these, T.R. Becker, I realized, hey, I found a home. And I realized I wanted to do something different. I wanted to make an impact, not just on my own life. Because in my 20s, probably like you, I wanted the nice cars, all that fancy watches. But as I get in my 30s and 40s, I realized I wanted something more. I wanted to leave an impact. And that's kind of why I'm here today, is I want to maybe give a few uh, seeds that help grow in people's mind in terms of that if I could do it, they could do it too. And also talk about what are the next things, the next big things out there that people should be aware of. Because I believe in today's society, if you really want to grow wealth, get yourself in new and upcoming fields. Because again, if you're trying to do, I always have the saying, if you try to invest the way your grandfather did, you're going to get even more horrible results. <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you can't do Like, we don't wear the same clothes as our grandfather. Yeah. We don't drive the same cars. We don't eat the same. We don't talk the same ways. The world changed and we've got the world changed. But right? why are we trying to invest the same way? Why are we using traditional investments like unit trusts? Why are we doing bonds? And so back in 2015, I first got introduced to cryptocurrency. And wow, my world has changed since then. Absolutely amazing. But I want to bring this back a little bit, right? Yep. Because you were sharing a little bit earlier, you know, 20 years old, you were on board an aircraft carrier, yep. probably touring and serving your country, and you read that book, and you discovered that that is not who you want to be, yep. where you want to be. So my question to you now, Louis, so who is the real Louis? What does the real Louis want? Great. I'm in my late 40s, and what I realized today, Louis is not so much about himself. It's like, what can I leave? I'm on my second chapter of my life. What can I leave and, and live, uh, leave the legacy? And what I realized over the last few months and the last few years, your mission, uh, Russia's mission, Ryan and the rest of the principals, our mission is not to help people make millions of more dollars. That's one aspect. But more importantly, how can we touch a million hearts? How can we impact a million hearts? And that's what I'm here today. So I don't know. And again, some of you guys, you realize as you get a little older that our time is limited on planet Earth, and how can we impact even more people? And that's why I love, that's why I'm still here. I want to impact with Modern Wealth Academy, with CRP. How can I impact even more? Because we've seen it. You've seen the last yeah. year, you've seen the last six months, where people just maybe get one or two trades where they're making 5 10 20% in a month, which in their traditional banking system, 
it, it'll take them forever to make that. Yeah. And right, and right now, in fact, we are seeing this every single day, right? The yes. amount of people that are coming up to us saying that their life has been changed. Yes. Uh, it's simply amazing. And of course, all thanks to this amazing gentleman right here, and right? Doing part of the, the team, part of right, the Doing a lot of the hard work. Yes. Right. So, so, Louis, I mean, truly, I think in, in that traditional sense, you know, where, where we talk about uh, traditional investments and everything mm -hmm. may not longer be the, the best way to move forward right now. And today, obviously, one of the key things that we do in MWA is that we let people explore uh, many new ways of investing, of growing their wealth, and when we create wealth for them, right, that is the byproduct, right? Because when we create all these possibilities yes. for them to be able to, to change their life, it could be through investment, through trading, through, mm -hmm. uh, you know, changing your mindset. This money is just a byproduct. So I want to hear from you actually from your own experience, right, Louis? What was the one thing that really changed your life so profoundly that led you to where you are today? Yes, first off, investing in cryptocurrencies and blockchain and futures is risky unless you know how. That's why I love the mission of Modern Wealth Academy is to educate people. And so my story goes back in probably in my 20s and 30s. Mm. And, uh, and I grew up in the U.S. and my mom worked for a hospital. And she's a nurse. And for 20, 30 years, she would put in something called 401k. It's like a retirement. Mm. And all these experts made it very complicated. And so, so she would just put you know, 500,000 bucks a month, come out of her paycheck. Then after 20 years, Gavin, do you know how much she had in there? She had less money in her account than what she put in. Oh dear, what happened? Yeah, because <laughs> all these advisors, and then she's like, yeah. listen, I would rather just put it under my mattress. I would have more wealth yeah. than given to you because she was down 30, 40%. Oh, but the man. experts, all they wanted to do is sell her different products and stuff. Oh. So then I realized, you know, part of my life's mission is to help people like my mom hold their hand and give them options. Mm. Show them, I'm not telling them they have to do it, but show them, listen, if you understand investing, if you understand, you'll have way more options than if you don't. Because I believe traditional investment strategies are there for the, the brokers to make money versus empowering people. Mm. And that's why I, you know, I'm with you, I'm with Rush, I'm with the rest of our team and our, our fellow peers to help empower individuals mm. that they can actually make successful choices because no one cares more about your money than you. And since my mom did that about 15 years ago, she took charge of her money, it's actually grown much better than if she kept it in these traditional investment funds or 401ks. That's so awesome, man. And of course, with Louis by your mom's side, mm -hmm. definitely, I'm sure the money is going to be a lot better than all these other you know, trusted experts and everything. But Louis, I mean, coming your whole journey as well, I mean, today I know you are one of the foremost experts you know, in cryptocurrency, in the blockchain technology. Uh, you have started companies and sold it within a six month period, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken. And you have already done like six, seven uh, millions, uh, seven over million dollars within that six months with that particular company and then you sold it. So you're obviously a very successful person today by all mm -hmm. standards measurable right but i want to dig a little bit on the dark side yeah. of it because when people have successes i'm pretty sure like many of us we have our own downfalls time where we didn't do so well as well and i want to have the audience to understand mm -hmm. right what were there such episodes before and if there were how did you actually eventually overcome those oh great great question there gavin so Again, I think I'm human just like everyone else. And in my 20s, my 30s, I remember I got married and we were more about our lifestyle, more about what we shared, uh, you know, where we would travel, first class, business class. I ended up giving my ex-wife a brand new Jaguar with a bow, all that kind of stuff. And because I was looking for external vehicles to get my happiness. Mm. I was like most people. I grew up very humble and I thought, and my parents would always fight because of lack of money. So I thought if I get older and if I had more money, more abundance, never have a fight. But I realized what success, true success and happiness comes from within. So again, you know, like, every, like a lot of other people I had downfalls or I ended up getting divorced. That costs a lot. Divorce is not, is not inexpensive. Uh, when I'm not in a resourceful state, as Tony Robbins says, you actually make stupid decisions. And what happened was about five, six years ago, you know, people ask me all the time, Louis, why do you get up every day? Why do you push so much more? You're only supposed to do this, but you do so much more. And I remember, and this is the, a story I don't think I've ever shared this, Gavin, is when I was in my 20s, when I was like 24, 25, I used to pray. And I still pray today, but I would pray for God or the universe to, to send me something to help me out. Because I didn't have thousands of dollars to attend these fancy courses. I didn't have that. And I remember him sending me books or sending me other teachers and coaches to really help me. And so, so now every time I go to bed at night, I think about, hey, if I can just reach one person, 
that next day, well, somebody who's praying for somebody like myself, Rush, or you, to help them and give them hope, it makes my life worthwhile. Wow. So that's why I know Rush, same way, you, you know, we do all this not for the money. The money is just a byproduct of how much value we can give. And one, one of my favorite teachers and mentors many years ago, he passed, his name is Zig, you guys know his last name? Ziegler. 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 And he says, if you can help enough people get what they want out of life, you'll get everything you want out of life and more. And that's a motto I live by today. Absolutely amazing. I love him. Zig Ziglar, one of the uh, best mm -hmm. coaches, you know, uh, authors ever. If you haven't read his book before, please go ahead and grab some of it. Maybe we could uh, input some of his books <laughs> as a link below. And, uh, but I, I really love that quote, you know, if you help enough people get what they want, you get everything that you want yeah. yourself. That's really an amazing, amazing quote. And that's something that you live by today. That's right? live by, but that's why I'm with Modern yeah. Wealth Academy, CRP, because that's one of our missions and yep. visions is to do that. That's kind of, I think, our driving force Absolutely. to help as many people. And because most people don't know, we can make more money just investing ourselves, yeah. you know. And But every month we have hundreds of new students come in. We walk them. And yes, if I just focus on the frustration, it can be, you know, click this button, cut and paste, all that stuff. But I focus, oh, my God, where are they going to be three months? Where are they going to be six months from now? Yeah. And what I really love is how we can empower people. Because not only are we empowering the parents, they're also sharing, as you notice, this event. You know, we happen to be in Vietnam, this beautiful event. We have parents bringing their children. You know, and, and that's exciting to see how we can spread this. Yes, obviously. I, I wish that my parents had brought me to the trust yes, event when yes. I was much younger so that yes. I could start my journey a little bit uh, younger as well. As we all know, you know, time is one of the biggest factors, the compounding factor that we can correct, use, correct. use in our investing journey. So, so Louis, I mean, the thing is that, you know, uh, you are now one, known as one of the guys who is the expert on blockchain technology and everything. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, this is very new stuff. This is like cutting edge stuff. Of course, now today is a little bit more mainstream. Yeah. But how did you decide to come into this field? Like, oh, what, what what happened? What was the story? I, I was blessed by the universe. So blessed by God. <laughs> so what happened was many years ago, uh, I met this uh, young gentleman named uh, John Terhune, and uh, he was in another business, and 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 he said, Louis, were you interested join this business? And mm. I said, No, not really, but I like you. So again, we were in Singapore, I took his name, I said, oh, you happen to live in Florida where my parents live. Mm. Uh, you know, if I go to Florida, you know, every year I visit my parents, I'll look you up. So a couple years later, I called him, I looked him up, and he said, and this was probably 2014, 2015, mm. and he said, Louis, have you heard of Bitcoin? And I said, yeah, he goes, what do you think about Bitcoin? I said, well, I think Bitcoin's a scam, you know, because that's all I heard in the news. I didn't investigate, I just read the headlines. Any of you guys guilty of reading the headlines and not the clickbait? And so, and so what happened was he goes, well, Louis, that's interesting. Do you mind if I give you some information? He goes, I just came back from Japan and Korea. You know, in Korea, they're not even, you know, issuing, you know, cents anymore. Everything's rounded up. And, and, yeah. and Japan is really big in the blockchain. So he explained that every couple of weeks, he sent me a new article, new article. Well, I'm like, wow. You know, and one thing I remember, and, and you know this, if you want to make big decisions, you got to be bold. Yeah. You got to be bold. The guys who are changing the world, the guys like Elon Musk, you know, the different people out there, they're the guys who are doing bold ideas. And so I said, if I really want to impact as many people as I can, i got to be bold. I have to go in the latest technologies. Even if I might be a little too early for the masses, it's okay. Uh, if you're in the way, things come your way. And so that's what happened. So again, me and John Terhune, we started doing different events. We didn't have a product. And we asked people. So we said, okay, here, let me help you. And back then, it would take you two days to open up a blockchain wallet or a Bitcoin wallet. You had to take pictures. It was horrible. <laughs> and, and at the end, we didn't have a product. We just did this stuff. At the end, we would say, okay, you guys done. And then people wouldn't leave. And so we said, okay. And again, I, I, I wasn't a speaker. I wasn't teaching. And then uh, John went back to the U.S. And, and people would keep coming. Louis, can I buy you lunch? Louis, I'll pay you $100. Can you teach me? Can you do this? And so that's how I became an expert because I just... I wasn't the, the best expert in the world. I was just a little further along the path than other people. Mm. And so th that's how I got started. And then from there, I've written 23 books on the subject. Uh, you know, and the beauty, I would say, with AI, with crypto, with blockchain, with NFTs, there's always a new story, always a new strategy come out along. Yeah. And that, that's why I love this space. And, and since we're on this topic right now, where we're on blockchain mm -hmm. and, and cryptocurrency and, and around this whole field, Today is mainstream, everybody's talking about it. Recently, we had the Bitcoin uh, ETF being approved. The next mm -hmm. narrative is definitely the Ethereum ETF. Yes. You know, it's being recognized now as a, not, I would say beyond just a store of value, but it's, it's being recognized as a technology that's really going to revolu revolutionize the whole world, the financial market. So mm -hmm. what's your take actually moving uh, into 2024 right now, where we're actually approaching here uh, for the Bitcoin halving at this time of 
uh, filming. But mm -hmm. what is going to happen to this whole fuel in the next maybe five to ten years? Oh, it's going to explode. It's going to explode. So if you can remember, and Gavin, you're a little too young, but remember uh, you probably the advent of the internet. When the internet first came out, oh, I remember. So I'm not that young. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. he just looks young with that beautiful head of hair. Is so 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 back then, if you remember in the '90s when the internet came out, I remember I was in high school and college. It was very archaic. Right, people, yeah. people, the traditional grandpas out there, they would say, "Oh, you know, no one's ever gonna, you know, give up magazines." And why? I love the feel of newspaper. My, you know, how hard it is to find a newspaper nowadays. The smell the yeah, newspaper. Smell the, yeah, people they're like, that, "I like yeah. my coffee in the newspaper." These are the grandpas, <laughs> but the young people, the people who are innovation, they're the ones who said, "Let's go all in." Right? I remember Amazon.com when people said, "You know, why would I want to buy books online? Why would I buy dog food online?" Yeah. But it was called Amazon.bomb. It was like two dollars a share. They went bankrupt. Yeah. But again, where is it at now? My God, it's made millionaires out of most people. So again, it's the technology that's really in, in the, the foresight of just hanging in there. Same with blockchain, same with crypto. You remember when crypto first came out, 2013, 14? Yeah. People probably didn't, didn't like it. I remember there. Yeah. Bitcoin was $800. Now, everybody. When my grandma wants to buy Bitcoin, I'm like, okay, it's great. <laughs> and then I'm looking at, okay, what's the next step? And again, I like to take traditional... Uh, wealth values like asset allocation and how can I apply that those traditional values that for growth how can I apply those in modern wealth strategies is kind of what we talk about modern wealth yeah. academy right not your grandfather's investment that's what I talk about so with AI there's a lot of great and AI is going to touch everything yeah so I'm positioning myself with AI tokens AI learning right AI everything because I don't want to be left behind and then we've got all these other narratives that are great and the only thing you can do, I think the best thing if you're out there, invest in education, invest in yourself. Because you've seen it. You've seen people, you know people who educated themselves, took small steps, maybe put a couple thousand dollars, and that couple thousand dollars over six months or a year is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Absolutely. Yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, it's, it's very interesting that you said that because obviously we are an education company yeah. and our mission is really to empower people with the knowledge that they need. And then, of course, with the knowledge that you have, you can choose to do whatever that you want with it. And one of the small steps that you can do right now, even by watching this video, many of you who may be watching this YouTube video, you are actually getting yourself educated, mm -hmm. right? Where we invite experts like Louis to share their opinion, insights, and their, you know, uh, foresights into what's going to happen in this whole uh, world in, in, in view of the money, in view mm -hmm. of the crypto, in view of AI, blockchain, whatever that is. So really, and knowledge is free today, right? You just go to youtube.com, type in any subject. You can be educated in almost anything imaginable. It's free. It's there. Or you can, of course, uh, come to Modern Wild Academy yeah. and we can share more with you as well. So really, the, the, education is, is so Education, key. but I would yeah. say specific education is more valuable. So, for example, mm -hmm. you can go to college and get education. Yeah. But when you come out of college, what do employers want? Specialized knowledge. Yeah. They want that specialized knowledge. And the challenge with YouTube, and I love YouTube, YouTube, you can spend thousands of hours and actually learn nothing. Mm. The reason why I love Modern Wealth Academy, the reason why I'm part of this, is because we take, we take thousands of hours of education and break it oh, down yes. to bison chunks. Yeah. And they also have somebody they can talk to. Because how many students have you seen that, you know, that they might be... Again, if you go on YouTube, yeah. who are you going to ask? Oh, I don't understand it, and the information might be old. Yeah. Every month, we're updating the information. Every week, actually, yeah. we're updating the information. I, I did a, a survey the other day, and for some of our VIPs, our, our entry-level program, I think we do 10 to 12 hours of new information each and every week, and our elites is 25 to 30 hours each and every week of new information. And if they still don't understand it, We've got support. We can help people yeah. question that. Because sometimes you need, just like a trainer in the gym, you need somebody to hold your hand and show you what the machines are, how to best utilize it. Otherwise, you might waste a lot of time and get zero progress done. Absolutely. So you touched on something very interesting that I want to find out yourself because I'm very keen in understanding who held your hands mm -hmm. when you needed them, right? With mm -hmm. all the knowledge that you have, you know, application and the implementation is key, mm -hmm. but who held your hand when you were lost, Louis? Share a little bit more about that. Who, uh, who are your mentors? I, I am very blessed. So I've, yeah. I've had uh, guys like Tony Robbins. I remember back when he was doing events with 30 people. That's how I, I met uh, one of our other uh, experts and collaborators, uh, Craig Richards. I've worked with guys like uh, T.R. Eckerd. Uh, I've always had a curious mind. I think mm -hmm. if you have a curious mind, uh, it, it just, people like that. And so I've always been helped and blessed. I worked with guys like Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things I learned from Jordan Belfort, and if you've seen his movie, he is cr crazy outrageous, but he says, <laughs> Louis, and, and we have at the back of our, our shirts, he goes, reach for the stars 
because if you miss it, you'll land on the moon. And that's one thing I learned from him because I wasn't thinking big enough. And so I was very blessed to work with a lot of Robert Kiyosaki advisors. But I would just say, as I'm always curious, and my belief is I can learn something from anyone. Mm. You know, when I've attended a lot of these events, I invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in my own education. And I always believe I can learn one thing. If I learn one thing and take action on it, it's important, right? And we talk about the importance of action. Yeah. Because you can be this. How many times do you guys know somebody out there who's very smart? You know, my brother, uncle, a sister, very book smart. But yet they're so poor because they don't take action. And how many times do you guys know somebody? You probably know, Gavin. Yeah. Somebody who's not the brightest, but he just took action at the right time, right place, right people, and he's in a different lifestyle. Absolutely, absolutely. And we see that really all the time, right? Mm -hmm. you, I mean, and we always, and, and I think one of the key things that you, you just triggered me to, to really understand is that it's also about who you take advices from, yeah. right? We can be like, for example, all the people who are extremely book smart, mm -hmm. they can be giving advice, but they may not be the best advice for you, mm -hmm. right? Because they have not done it themselves. They are not the one taking action. And when they give the advice to you, you might end up doing it, but because it's not proven, Right, you're going to end up failing and falling. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I think is very important as well. So for your case, Louis, like, who do you seek advice from? Like, in today, mm -hmm. well, like, being a, already being such an expert, like, who else like, do you take advice from? Who are the people that you approach? Uh, I actually have two things. One, I have a lot of experts uh, that are, like, I might know them personally or I might get their knowledge through YouTube, like Alex or Hermosi. Uh, you know, some of the uh, guys who started big companies. Mm. Uh, that's one thing. And also, I get a lot of advice, a lot of things from people who are big into spirituality. Because I believe the spirituality helps me calm and, and understand the inner game. Mm. And the outer game will take care of itself. So, so you, you want people to, to focus more on the inside and the outside will just come to them? That's I 100% believe that. You've heard of law of attraction. Yeah. You've heard of a lot of things. And I believe that no matter where you're at, if you have that ability to believe that things, good things are going to happen yeah. for you, not to you, things, things will happen. Okay. Things will happen. You'll meet the right person. <laughs> you know, I happen to meet uh, Rush, right, our founder. And I'm yeah. known of Rush. I see him at different events. We never connected. And it wasn't until I, I, I sold this company and I had a six-month non-compete that I met Rush at some of the crypto events. Mm. And I, I think you just started CRP or just about to start it. And we started talking. Mm. I was like, okay, cool. You know, and we both had experience with a couple other people that maybe weren't kind to us. And so we bonded over that, right? The enemy <laughs> of my enemy is my friend, right? And so, so, we, so we bonded over that, right? And then I realized, wow, Rush is a good guy. And, and then we, we started adding value. That's how I met you, right? Yes. It's all proximity. And who would have thought, uh, it's been about a year, who would have thought that, you know, now we're, you know, back then we had, what, 30, 40 people? And now yeah. we've had four or 500 people at every event. Yep. Thousands of people, right? Yeah. Back then, our biggest thing was, you know, set up one WhatsApp group chat. Thousand people, we never thought we'd fill it. Now, it's like every two weeks, we got to open up another WhatsApp chat, right? Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's just amazing uh, how, you know, synergies match together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when the good synergy and when the good people come together, mm -hmm. the amazing things can be done yes. uh, together. And I remember when we first met, we were at Batam. Yeah. Right? And the hotel that we met, you know, were definitely not as people as nice as this, no, no. right? The lights were not even working, the doors were yes. not working, the, we can't even have coffee at the, mm -hmm. the lounge and stuff. So to where we are today right now is really just an amazing journey and I'm very blessed to have you in my life as well, man, Louis. Yes. That's amazing. All right, guys, so we actually heard such amazing stories from uh, Louis, you know, how he actually began from humble beginnings, from an aircraft carrier to someone who actually sold businesses, you know, founded uh, uh, Bottle Rock Academy with us and really done so amazing, amazing job with everybody. And next, we are actually going to pick his brain so much deeper, <laughs> like literally, to really understand how he come up with his strategies, you know, how he does his trades, and how he actually going to do, you know, plan forward to help even more people achieve their dreams in their life. And if that's something that interests you, remember to continue watching this episode and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as well. So, Louis, come, let's carry on right now. Yes. And today, in our community, you are very, very uh, loved by our members and they just called you the Sniper Louie, right? Yeah. Now that's kind of like your nickname right now. Yes. I'm just curious, how did you actually come up with the strategy? Right? Share the, the story with people. Oh, I'll share it with you. It came out of frustration, right? <laughs> so what happened was, uh, you know, and so my story with CRP is, uh, I met Rush about a one year ago today, yeah. and, and we were in Singapore, and Rush is like, hey, Louie, it's your birthday next weekend. Do you want to come to Kuala Lumpur? And I'm like, oh, I'm not too sure. 
Uh, and he goes, I'll pay for everything. I'm like, okay, let's go, right? So we went. <laughs> and then when we get here, uh, we get here Friday morning. He's like, Louis, uh, I said, let's go out. Let's go to restaurants, all that good stuff. And he's like, uh, I can't. I've got my class. I said, okay, your crypto class. I said, well, tell me about it. And he's like, uh, you know, uh, it's like this, but you, you don't need to know because, you know, you've been in this space since for the last five, six years. I said, no, no, tell me. And, uh, and so he told me about it. It's futures. Now, again, I thought futures were dangerous because why? Two years ahead of before that, I was doing futures. They didn't have stop losses. They had 100x leverage. It was different because, again, the technology evolved, mm. right? And so, again, I said, Resh, what's your class? And since, you know, you're going to be on the webinar and I'll be in my room, just let me know. I'll, I'll pay for the class and maybe I'll get one thing out of it. Again, back to the, you know, if I can get one thing out of it. Well, I listened. It was Friday night. I listened to Resh. Good. Kelvin, first time meeting Kelvin, and Kelvin was sharing. I'm like, wow, he's sharing this. I'm like, oh, I didn't know you stopped loss. Wow, it makes sense. 10x leverage instead of 100. So he just shared a few key points. And I was, I was wow, I was writing down notes. And then the next day, Saturday, he went more. And I was like, wow. And I said, Resh, I want to be a part of this. How can I help you know, uh, with you in your mission and vision? I know I can help this. I know I can teach some other strategies. Mm. And, and so, so that went. So I followed, again, other people's rules, Kelvin's rooms and Kelvin's rules. I got so frustrated because I would put in a long trade. And some of you guys might really put in a long trade. Everyone else is making money. I'm losing money. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> so again, I'm a guy. What do I do? It's a guy. I put even more indicators in, right? Again, I made it more complicated, hundreds of indicators. And then finally, it would take me 40 minutes to look at one thing. It was horrible, right? So I said, there's got to be a better way. I got frustrated. So I prayed, and the, the universe said, start over. So I started over. I put one indicator at a time. And, what, and you know what we call PR, pattern recognition. Yeah. I just started to see, okay, which charts, and I would back test. And I probably, since then, the last six months, I'm probably looking at maybe three, 400 charts a day and versus you know, hundreds of thousands of charts to understand the pattern recognition. Mm. And again, and, and I figured out a strategy that works best for me in my timeline. Mm. One of the things you know, it doesn't matter. Your strategy might be 50 years old, but you always got to evolve. Right? You always have to evolve. you got to put yourself out of business. Yeah. So I believe in that. You know, all, a lot of the things, and again, I wish we could tell them, but, but we're still working on a lot of the other technologies we talked about earlier. Yeah. That's going to blow us away. Absolutely. And that's what you have to do. And again, this is one thing I learned in business from Robert Kiyosaki and all the other uh, business, Warren Buffett. You always got to open your mind. Warren Buffett many years ago would not invest in technology. Mm -hmm. Now a bulk of his stuff, Apple, is technology. So he changed his mind. I remember uh, Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary. Yeah. Kevin O'Leary, back when I first started cryptocurrency, he says, oh, it's a scam. He didn't believe in Tesla. Then his son said, hey, Dad, let me share about Bitcoin. And then I remember he started liking it. Then Tesla, he didn't like Tesla. And then he goes, Dad, it's not about the car. It's about technology with Tesla. And he's one of the biggest investors in Tesla. He loves cryptocurrency, blockchain. Same thing. I said, if they can do it, and they're multi-billionaires, open up their mind, why can't I do it too? So again, so I started pattern recognition. I started sharing it with a few people beta, and then we tweak it, we tweak it. The other thing too is I never make myself, I'm the expert. I'm just saying, listen, I'm a little further along the path. I will take action. The same with Rush. Rush tells people he's not the expert, but he'll get the other experts in. Yep. And this whole weekend, we're next, next gen. We've got, what, six, seven of the top experts from around Absolutely. the world yeah. flying in. I'm excited about this. I am excited as well. I can't wait to actually listen to all these experts coming to share. And like you said, it's about even if you just get that one thing out, yes. it's going to potentially could change our life. Yes, yes. Right? And, and one of the very interesting things that you mentioned, Louis, is this, right? I mean, you, your, your mindset about, you know, I, I, I just be able to get one thing out, I mm -hmm. learn, and then I'll be able to implement. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at charts, you know, pattern mm -hmm. recognition, three and four hour charts a day. The truth is this, right? I mean, I don't know. It's, it is my frustration sometimes when we, I talk to some of our students, mm -hmm. and I realize that they'll say that, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to do, we need to bring the hard work. And mm -hmm. when they get home, they just put everything down. They're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to relax, I'm going to chill. Mm -hmm. They just seems to lack that maybe discipline or yeah. mindset to do what is required, mm -hmm. but you have that drive mm -hmm. and you are actually doing it. Like, what is the driving force behind that and what can people learn from you so that they can also can have that discipline and that mindset to, to do what it takes to succeed? Well, one thing I learned from Rash by Health, you got to set the example. Yeah. So one thing, I'll give you one of our students, I won't mention her name, but uh, she did seven trades in the first month. Seven trades, not a lot of trades. Seven trades a lot a month. Yeah. First month, because you want to get everything right. Yeah. She had dinner with myself and Kelvin, some of the coaches. And Gavin, because we just said something, we said, well, take your time, but don't take all the time. Mm. And the next four days, she did 34 trades, 32 were winners. Wow. Right? So we challenged her belief. Because of that, I remember uh, another uh, young lady from Malaysia, 
And her first week, again, she was trying all different things. And a couple of the rules we have, a couple of the suggestions we have, is you never take more than two open trades at one time. Mm. Now she, because she's coming from a Forex background, she had a lot of things. She didn't list anything we said. And she was looking at all these different charts. And she told me the first week she had 54 open trades at one time. Can wow. you imagine that like you have to scroll so 54, <laughs> right? And she goes, I'm getting so frustrated, she almost burned out. And then so I said, hey, let me show you a different strategy. Try it, try it on for size. It's like a buffet. I believe we have six or seven different strategies. You yeah. can pick which one based on that. And so, and then from there, she's okay, she got a couple in, great. And then one time, I remember it was a Thursday night about a month ago. I did uh, five trades in a row. So I did two, I uh, closed out of them, profit two, and I did five winning trades in a row. And she's like, Louie, she's like, hey, uh, don't burn out, okay? And I said, really? And I said, well, your belief is you only do two trades a day. Nothing wrong with that. My belief is I wanna do more. Mm. So the next day, I did 21 trades uh, in a row, all winners, mm -hmm. right? And, the, and so again, it's all about expanding. You know, one of the students asked me last week, I did 18 trades in a day. Right? And I was just showing, and most of these were on webinars. So, so people said, Louis, what would you get into? And I show them live, you know, you've seen it. I think I've done 38 uh, Zoom sessions or in-person sessions where people actually make, make money you know, using our strategies. And one of the guys said, well, Louis, if you're so accurate, why don't you just do two trades and put margin? I said, yeah, but how is that gonna help you? I started at six in the morning and I did trades all the way till midnight just to show you that, hey, if you get off your butt and learn the patterns, mm -hmm. you can make money any time of the day. And so one thing I love about Resh, about you, about the other principals, about the coaches, is we are actually traders. We take action. We show you our wins and our losses. No other community does that. Yep. No other community does that. We just, show. They only show like, the wins and yeah. they try to hide the losses. Yeah. Like, like, I, I think one of the things that we, we live by in our community is right? mm. actually one of the biggest lessons that you can always get is actually from your losses. Yeah. Right? When you actually experience losses, that's why you know what are the things not to do. Mm -hmm. so that you will not repeat their mistakes. But, the, but the, the frustrating thing sometimes is that people don't seem to learn mm -hmm. from their losses, meaning that they, they, they lost, but they cannot seem to interpret what went wrong. So yeah. how do you actually interpret the losses and what lessons could people learn from their losses? How could they get the lesson? So I remember uh, many years ago I was married and I, and I adored, I still love my ex-wife and because she really had a business mindset. So I remember one time, I lost like $4,000 trading Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, futures. And uh, so I came back, I was depressed, right? They said, <laughs> they said a, a good trader, uh, your partner uh, or your friend should never see if you won or lost. They should never tell by emotions. But I was felt down, right? And so she asked, what's wrong? I said, oh, I lost 4000 today, which is a big amount, right? 4000 bucks. And she goes, did you follow the rules? So I said, yes, I followed the rules. She goes, what are you worried about? And I go, what do you mean? She goes, if you follow the rules and you, you lose money, it's okay because you follow the rules. If you didn't follow the rules and you lost money, well, you're an idiot. And she goes, I didn't marry an idiot. You know? And so that's why I tell people, listen, you are, we never ask them to be 100% correct. Mm -hmm. What do we ask them? 70, 80%. We have our strategy, right? Mm. And we tell them, what do we tell them? In the beginning, you just learn the techniques, right? You learn the techniques. Do dollar, $2 trades, right? Paper trade. Because you want to get that. It's very easy to scale up. But what happens? Most people don't follow the rules. Mm. And sometimes the university don't follow the rules will humble you. And that's when you, it I'm sure, yeah, <laughs> you've been humbled, I've been humbled. I'm sure you guys out there in the audience have been humbled over life if you don't follow the rules. So for me, it's I follow the rules. If I don't follow the rules, I tell them, hey, didn't follow the rules and, and, and I'm an idiot. But again, if I follow the rules, I'm good. I'm good. It, it, it sounds a bit like, uh, all right, what I'm hearing is that you know is we have to take ownership for our mistakes, right? Yep. We have to take ownership for the things that we have done wrong. Mm -hmm. And then from there, once we acknowledge it, yep. right, and we take ownership, that's when we're gonna be able to improve ourselves. Yep. Because if you have never taken ownership of it, we just be like, oh, it's somebody else's mistake, you know, it's mm -hmm. something else that caused me this. Right? But when you say it's my fault, I didn't follow the rule, I will improve. Yep. Right, but if you think the other way around, then things never gonna change. And here's one yeah. thing I love about cryptocurrency and blockchain futures. It's, it's, it's so open nowadays that anyone can get started. You can get started with a few bucks. Yeah. And with futures, which again, when I started in 2015, 16, we didn't have this. We can make money if Bitcoin goes to 100,000. We can make a lot more money if Bitcoin goes to zero. Mm. And this is what gives me confidence. So no matter when you come in, if you watch this video and you sign up for one of our, our free education master classes with our partner, Resh, it doesn't matter what the price of Bitcoin is. Because mm. people always think, hey, I missed out. Yep. You can make a lot of money if a Bitcoin price goes up. You can make even more money if Bitcoin price goes down.
And that's what I love about this. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, for those of you who want to find out more, you know, we have some of the links right below this video. You can uh, join our free uh, classes that we do every week. right? So mm -hmm. just click on the link below and you'll be able to do that. And by the way, I just wanted to highlight something that everything that we just talked about are not financial advice. Mm -hmm. Please exercise your own due diligence. We are not recommending you to buy or sell anything. right? Always invest with what you are prepared to lose. That is something that is very, very important as well. Okay, so uh, Louis, I mean, we went through a lot of amazing stuff. Uh, we went through a lot of amazing ideas, mindset, and things like this. I want to understand, what is your plan for the future? Oh, my plan for the future yeah. is, is the same <laughs> aligns with you. is to touch a million hearts. We're, we're on our way to do it, but we need your help. We need your help. Because why? If you come and I can empower you, and Gavin can empower you, and Rush can empower you with some of the strategies, well, then you can empower other people. One thing I realize is if you give value, just like Zig Ziglar talked about earlier. Mm. If you give value, people will always be there. And what I love about this community, we're very transparent. We are not perfect. You know, investing, investing is, in cryptocurrencies is risky unless you know how. That's why we always focus on education. And those who followed the strategies, the tools, and took action, we haven't had a failure yet. And that's mm. what I love about this. Yes, uh, I mean, again, like what Louis is sharing, we are not saying that we are perfect. We are definitely not. But I think what we strive to do is that we keep improving, right? That 1% every single day, mm -hmm. right? The, something that we, we get constructive feedback from, we improve upon it. You know, people tell us that, hey, you could do this better this way. We take mm -hmm. action, right? And that's really the whole spirit of the community, the whole spirit of the company, that we always just want to do things better and do things right by our students, right? Like Louis himself, he mm -hmm. was frustrated with yeah. his strategy. And that's why he came up with a sniper strategy that is now right, absolutely blowing away everybody's mind, yeah. right? And the company, you know, from... The, from, our, from where we first met in Batam, yeah. like run now hotel and everything, <laughs> yeah. we keep improving and now we are in a five-star hotel doing retreat for hundreds and hundreds of our VIP. Yeah, and it sells out. Yes. We, we can't take more people. <laughs> yeah. and, and one of the things I want to say was different about this company versus other companies, the coaches, all the coaches are actually traders. Absolutely. Every single coach has come in here and 99% of the staff are actually students and actually traders. So all the coaches, I think we have 10 or 15 now, are all traders. So you're not talking to somebody just got a degree, a sales guy or something like that. These are guys who actually trade and they understand what you're going through. And that's the most important thing. Like for example, let's say I want to lose weight. I should get a trainer that's actually lost weight. I shouldn't get a guy who's skinny like Gavin who's never had to lose weight because he might not fully understand skinnier than me, right? Might not, <laughs> might, not, might not fully understand what I'm going through. I would want to get a transformation expert who was like, you know, 150 kgs and now he's 70 kgs. Same with us. All of us the coaches, the whole team rush, we're all traders, we have the frustration, we understand. That's why we always like to hold your hand, especially in the beginning, to empower you with the tools and strategies that actually work. Awesome, awesome. So maybe just to like conclude the video, you know, I think we have covered so many amazing strategies, mm -hmm. a lot of mindset stuff, which I think is extremely, extremely valuable to every single one of you that is watching this right now. So if you have not been taking notes, go back to the start of the video take out your paper and pen and start writing notes from the very can, beginning. Can I share one thing with the yeah, thing before? Of course, go ahead. So, so the one thing I want to share with you is if you really want to make a massive difference in your life, you got to do something different, completely different. Yeah. You got to take bold actions. If you haven't looked at cryptocurrencies, blockchain, all this stuff, educate yourself first. But you are the one who might break the poverty cycle of your family. And that was me. That's Gavin, right? And the only way you're going to do that is by taking bold actions that most people are think is crazy. I'm not telling you to mortgage your house. I'm not telling you any of that stuff. I'm telling you, do something that's growing. You can be the best fax machine salesperson. You can make the best fax machines, but no one wants your stupid fax machines, right? <laughs> no one wants. What do people want? They want freedom. Yeah. They want transparency. They're tired of the traditional banks. They're tired of traditional big businesses. Web3 is all about empowering individuals to take ownership and actually pay us. So again, if you haven't educated yourself, click on the link below and educate yourself in this new you know, economy that's going to transform lives. Mm. Well, I wasn't really going to conclude the video, but I think you touched on something that I want to carry on asking as well, right? Because you talk about this, this term, we haven't mentioned it earlier, is Web3, mm -hmm. right? Where it's about giving control back to the people who mm -hmm. actually uses the web, right? I mean, you know about Web 1.0, mm -hmm. right? Which is when internet started, so... I wasn't that young. I, mm -hmm. I, I was there yeah. when the internet first got started. And then we move on to Web 2.0, which mm -hmm. many of us actually been through over the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And Web 3.0 is really coming. So what's your take on, on this actually, Web 3.0? Do you really think that you know, people are... I mean, this is my personal question, right? Do you really think that people 
are mature enough to take control of of, of Web 3.0 and, 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 and have and that power in their hands. I, I love that question. I think yeah. it's going to be a hybrid. Okay, so Web 1.0, if you don't know, that was like AOL, that was read only kind of you read, I was it like online newspapers. Web 2.0 is like Facebook, Instagram, yep. where you can read, but you also can interact right. a little bit. The challenge Web 2.0 is in the control of a few people, mm. right? And again, you, you don't have freedom of speech. For example, Facebook, if you don't like something, you can get flagged. Instagram, yeah. you don't like. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good if you're on the other side, right? Yeah. Web 3.0 is all about you know, having the freedom. The challenge is Web 2.0, they're all billionaires. Do they want to give up control? No, they don't. So right now, I think we're going to have a Web 2.5 where you're gonna have uh, pockets of individuals, smart, intelligent people who are gonna create stuff, but I think you still need the backing mm. of web, uh, web 2 to do that. Mm. Okay, because not everyone, again, the thing about Web 3.0, or Web 3, for example, there's hardware wallets, there's crypto exchanges, decentralized network, but if you lose your, your keys or you lose your password, it's, you're, it's done, gone. You're, done. <laughs> you're done, yeah, but Web 2, you, you can actually contact somebody, get your password, yeah. and banks are more like Web 2. Web 3 is this all in the sphere out there. So again, I think it's going to be a hybrid, yeah. and, and I like the hybrid, because if, if I lose something, I, can call, I like to call, call somebody, yell at them, or whatever, help me. So, so in terms, of, and again, it doesn't have to be all or none, right? It doesn't have to be. It's like, you know, do I eat all healthy food or, you know, or non-healthy food? You can do a hybrid model, and that's where I think we're going to go. Wow, that's a very interesting viewpoint, actually. You know, uh, coming from a forefront expert on the Web3 space, mm -hmm. like to say that we've got to have hybrid uh, session. And I think, I, I totally agree, right? Because I don't think we are at a stage where people are mature enough, number one, to yeah. really take care of themselves. And number two is that whenever something does go wrong, and I think things go wrong all the time, mm -hmm. at least they have someone to fall back to. That's a yeah. very interesting uh, perspective. Yeah. Right, so with that, uh, guys, I think uh, today we have really a blessing to have uh, Louis to come on this show and really you know uh, Louis is one of our head coaches here at MWA he's been doing an amazing amazing job we have so many people right now clamoring for his time so really you know to have Louis here to spend time with us you know the past one hour sharing all his insights his mindset his strategy to really empower you that is something that the podcast really aim and set out to do so if you enjoy this episode ladies and gentlemen please 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 comment down below what is the one biggest takeaway that you have from Louis. And what I'm going to do is this, right? For those uh, comments down below, if you have commented something that is constructive because we want people to take action, we want people to learn, right? And if you have one very good constructive uh, lesson learned that from this particular podcast, we're going to pick a winner. In our next episode, we're going to call out a winner and we're going to give you a very, very special prize. So if you have not commented down below, do that right now. And also don't forget to comment, uh, sorry, to like and subscribe to our channel as well. And if you want to follow Louis, Louis, how do they find you? Uh, Instagram, louis.pinto, Louis Pinto is there. But more importantly, I want you to help make MWA better by joining our community and help us grow this, help us reach even more lives. So please comment below, please subscribe, please forward this to your friends and family. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure you guys, you guys found a lot of value, like guys and ladies out there. Uh, just forward this out, no? make someone day, you never know, right? Like we shared a lot about this uh, today as well. If your uh, family and friends just learn that one thing from this particular video that might potentially change the whole trajectory of their life. You never know. Right, so go ahead and share this video right now. And once again, uh, Louis, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Gavin. Such an amazing, amazing interview. I learned a lot myself about his mindset and just, you know, this uh, tenacity. Mm -hmm. Right to me, you know, Louis, really appreciate you stepping up, you know, your tenacity, your, your willingness to give, being so generous all the time, just really spur me on to keep me going. So I love that about you, brother. Thank you, Gavin going out there and impact more life. And again, ladies and gentlemen, this is an amazing uh, episode of the Modern One Podcast where we aim to empower, enrich and evolve your mindset and we can't wait to see you on the next episode. Ciao, bye-bye, see you for the next one. Bye-bye.